Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of the U.S. History GCAST as presented by Gibsonian Institute. Today, we're looking at two topics within the Cold War. We're looking at who to point the finger at as to who to blame for all this mess. And then we're going to look at the U.S. policy of containment. So let's get right into our objectives here. Our first one is to weigh the evidence as to who is to blame for rising, excuse me, raising tensions in the Cold War. So we're going to, we're, that's going to be our first half. Our second half is going to identify in detail four specific examples of U.S. containment policy. So let's get started. First, we got to look at a couple of conferences. The first one is the Delta Conference, and it's between the Soviet Union and the Allies. Of course, we remember that the Allies are Britain, France, and the United States, and it takes place in February of 1945, so before the end of the war. All right, so by this point, we've established we're, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this this up but what are we gonna do after we win and it's gonna take place in yalta in the soviet union but the, the the more important thing is what happens here is that the soviet union agrees to allow free and open elections in poland and eastern europe so uh that's that's something the allies were looking to uh keep in mind as they were concluding the war to try to keep these not only stop the spread of communism in, a direct, in an indirect way like this, but to possibly even spread uh, a form of democracy around. And the importance here is that the Allied forces are also going to agree on how to split and rebuild Europe. We're going to look specifically at Germany uh, today as well. And as I mentioned, U.S. and Britain and France are going to look to limit the spread of communism through this, uh, through some of the goals that they accomplish in the Yalta Conference. Second set that they're going to have is the Potsdam Conference. And again, same people, the USSR and the uh, Allies. This time it's July 1945, so a couple months later. Uh, but this time it's taking place in Germany, Potsdam, Germany. And what's happening here is three main things. One, they agree to split Germany into quadrants. If you figure there's four people at the meeting, the, uh, the Soviet Union, Britain, France, and the United States. So there's four quadrants, one for each. Uh, however, it's going to be basically really split into an east and a west. East is going to be the Soviet Union. The west is going to be fit, split into thirds, where it's going to have, Britain's going to have a section, France, and the United States. I have, a, I have a map that'll show this a little bit later. But the west is really going to be fairly united. If you figure that we have a, a, a side that follows forms of democracy, and the other side, the east, follows communism. So they, they have two different ideals. Uh, but So they're going to be uniform in that, in that sense, uh, depending on east or west. Uh, they also are going to agree to split Berlin into two. And the uh, impact of this is that Berlin, the capital of Germany, uh, however, it's predominantly very, very far into the eastern side of Germany, uh, but they're going to split that capital into two. So the east side of Berlin is going to be the Soviet side. The west side of Berlin will be the uh, allied side. And even still today, you can really see the difference between the two sides of Berlin, even though there no longer is a Berlin wall. Um, the lighting, uh, so like the street lights, you can see a, a drastic difference right on the split as to which side is west and which side is east. So it's very interesting to see the ramifications in the, the history of that city influenced by this particular time period. And the last thing is Stalin reneges on allowing free elections. Uh, and this is evidenced by the Communist Party taking control in Hungary after only receiving 17% of the votes. So now Hungary, of course, a Eastern European nation uh, that is becoming communist, probably under pressure of the Soviet Union. Um, but it does not follow through. It's, it's not following through with the uh, idea of free elections. And, of course, the importance of this is that this violates the Yalta Conference, causing tensions to rise. So now let's get into the part where it's, it's time to figure out who is it to blame. And we're going to do this. Uh, there's, there's documents posted on Google Classroom um, from the Stanford History Education Group, something that we've used a lot. We're used to this by this point. Uh, so you're going to read and respond to the first two documents. And, and I'm going to ask you your opinion. Who is, who is to blame for this situation right now? And then you're going to read C and D, and then you're going to revisit that opinion. All right, so make sure you take the time, read those thoroughly, complete the guiding questions, and then give me your opinion after the first two documents. Some more guiding questions for C and D. Revisit that opinion. It may or may not change. All right, so go ahead and get the, get uh, get working on that. And when you're finished, come on back for the second half here. All right, welcome back. We are now starting with the second half of the. 
uh, episode here, we are now on the acts of containment. We're going to look at four specific ones, and we'll go one by one. All right. But first, we need to uh, give a definition for the idea of uh, the idea of containment, the policy, which is the belief that if the U.S. prevented communists from spreading, it would quote burn itself out, meaning it's not something that can last very long. Uh, and it's going to end up kind of being correct, seen as there was a lot more communist countries at that time period than there are now today, namely the Soviet Union. However, there are still some, as you can see on this map even, such as China and North Korea. So the first thing that we're going to see is the Truman Doctrine. Uh, and what this is going to be is the president at the time, Harry S. Truman, comes out and says that the U.S. will prevent communist governments from setting up anywhere in the world where they don't already exist. So starting this day... No more communist governments being set up. This is this is the cutoff. If it starts to, if if someone's going to try to infiltrate a government uh, system that's already in place and try to switch it to communism, the United States is going to step in. And this is going to abolish the Monroe Doctrine, which I'm sure we all remember is basically the United States came out. James Monroe said, "We're staying on our side. You stay on your side. Everyone would be cool." But this was more of an address to Europe saying stay in the Eastern Hemisphere, United States will stay in the Western Hemisphere. But if you come into the West, we're going to say something. Uh, this is throwing that out the window. Now we are completely just doing, um, we're, we are going to take an active role and an active approach in the world politics situation based on the communists. The importance of this is that the U.S. will take action to limit the spread of communism to direct action, sometimes sanctions, sometimes it could be military action, but the United States is not going to stand by. All right, this is, uh, and this picture comes from Truman's speech here. Second one is going to be the Marshall Plan, which is going to send money, supplies, and machinery to any European country that asks for it, essentially. If you want some money, we got it. Uh, if you recall, the United States is basically the, becomes the world superpower that it's revered as today, or had been, um, because of the, the the way that we the, the the situation we find ourselves in after World War II ends, all right, and that is everyone else has just had war fought on their their land, and we were making a lot of money off the war as well, and got ourselves out of the Great Depression because of it. So we are going to end up spending thirteen billion dollars in aid, and there is a big importance here is that if we're helping countries out after the post war depression that they're experiencing that they have to build up. We're stopping revolutions from happening, and by stopping revolutions, we're stopping the opportunity for communism to spread to those nations. So if a nation is really weak, they are gonna they might look for radical ideas, or different ideas, rather, than what they normally had. So if, we're, if we want things to stay status quo, nothing changed, we are going to help them out so that they don't have to look for a different idea. All right. So a great piece of propaganda comes from the Marshall Plan. A lot of a lot of visuals there. They're showing all the different countries, uh, whether the weather, weather, whatever the weather, we o we only reach welfare together. Really good piece right there. Uh, one of my favorites. You'll notice though, uh, a lot of these: the Netherlands, Ireland, Sweden, um, Italy, Denmark, France, United Kingdom, Norway, Germany. Sweden, Iceland, all of them, the majority of these are Western European nations, save for the Turkey, uh, the Turkish flag right there, the Turkey, the Turkish flag there, of uh, the, the crescent and star. Uh, they're going to be like the one really big holdout in the east that the United States is really going to cling to. And there's a comeback when we talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, uh, two more we got here, Berlin Airlift. United States, Great Britain, and France decide that they're going to unite West Germany and return control to the Germans uh, under supervision, and and they're going to help set up the government, and it's going to be a democracy. Um, but the United States, uh, England, and France are looking to kind of give give the country back. The Soviet Union does not support this idea, and in fact, are going to protest by blockading Berlin from the West in an attempt to control all of Berlin. They're they're making a move to take all of Berlin, the capital. All right. So Truman really has two options, it would seem. One, he can use troops to forcibly open a blockade, which would likely result in the beginning of World War III over a city that's very far from the United States. So that might be hard, especially only years, Berlin airlifts happening in 48, uh, only years after, mere years after World War II even ends. Or you can do nothing, let communism spread and show that the Truman Doctrine is just a bunch of words and not actually action. So he's in a bit of a situation here. And the solution that, that, that Truman comes up with here is actually pretty, 
you got to give us credit here. It's not a, not a bad solution. Uh, so he's going to supply to 2 million citizens in West Berlin by airdrops day and night uh, for a series of years. And that, that's very important because it prevents West Berlin from becoming communist while also pressuring the Soviet Union to give up and eventually reopen uh, Berlin to the West. All right. So the the uh, the roads are eventually going to open back up into Berlin, but it's not going to be so easy to, to supply them. So the airlifts will continue even after these 10 months. However, um, the pressure that the Soviet Union is putting on Berlin to become part of the communist portion of Eastern Germany is going to end after those 10 months. So it's, it's a it's, uh, shows the ability of Truman to really get it done under pressure here. He's speaking creatively uh, and is able to avoid confrontation while still looking strong. So uh, impressive. Uh, so you can hear, so this is the map I was mentioning here. As you see the four quadrants, we got the Soviet Union one, of course, in red. The green is the United Kingdom. That's going to be the northwest portion. The far west is going to be the French. And then the central and kind of the south region going to be the United States. Uh, the green, blue, and orange, you, you should uh, essentially just treat those as one giant chunk because they're going to be working closely together, the Allies, whereas the Soviet side, and you can see in the middle where the roads, the white roads will lead to, and that is Berlin, the black side being in the west, the Allied control, the red side being the east, the Soviet control. All right. And you can see just how far into, um, into the eastern side it is. And we got our last one, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is going to be an alliance between Western European nations, the United States, and Canada. Their motto is an attack on one, is an attack on all. So it's definitely another way of strengthening the United States position in Europe. The importance of this is that the United, uh, excuse me, the Soviet Union is going to, in theory, be more reluctant to invade and spread communism in Western Europe if there is a whole organization now that's that's banded together to stop that all right so we've got the nato uh nato still around today these are the original members here the soviets are going to respond with the warsaw pact this is going to be created by the ussr as a response to the nato agreement and it's going to include mostly com communist friendly countries known as satellites uh, but also communist led nations in eastern europe and here we have the uh the, the sort of badge for the uh, the Warsaw Pact, and you'll you'll notice the <clears throat> the German flag there with the with the logo in the middle. That is the East German flag. All right. So uh, this concludes what we've got today. What I want you to do: there is a note catcher that I have provided, um, and I'm, I'm in, in the Google Classroom post. I mentioned that I want you to follow along with that note catcher while following along in these notes. So make sure that you have that completed from the second half on. Uh, and that you have uh, completed the opinions on the who to blame for the Cold War. Uh, other than that, if you need any help with any of this, you can always contact me through email or you can come see me at the office hours in normal times, 1230 to 1. Uh, other than that, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good rest of your day.